So here we go for all my writing. So definition 8.8.1 is going to talk about two different things. Eigenvalues, which are the lambdas, and eigenvectors. And I use a capital K for my vectors. I do not, I'm not a book, so I don't write things in bold print, right? That's kind of weird. <laughs> so to distinguish the two, I will be using capital Ks and little Ks. Now those could look a lot alike, couldn't they? Right? <laughs> it's just a K. <laughs> so notice the way that I write my capital K. This little leg is sticking out of the other leg, right? My little Ks, I have them both sticking out of the stem, okay? So that's literally going to be your cue between whether I'm talking about a vector or I'm just talking about a little um, entry, okay, in the matrix. So make sure you pay attention to where the little leg is sticking out of so you know that if it's a little K or a big K. And I would suggest that you do the same thing or start like scribbling this K real fat to make it like nice and bold so that you can identify your vectors versus your little Ks, okay? It, in the book, it's nice because they use bold print, but <laughs> for me, I can't use bold print. So I mean, I could, but it's just ridiculous. You start looking like my paper, like if I'm mad or something, because there's all this hard pressing everywhere. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna have a matrix. So it says, let A be a or N, N by N matrix. Remember in the augmented matrix, I'm going to go back. If I were to just look at this side, there are N rows and N columns. So when they say let A be an N by N matrix, what they're referring to is your augmented matrix. You just don't know it yet, okay? But they are referring to your augmented matrix. So um, that's what A they're referring to. It says a number, and that's just the word A, not this A, okay? <laughs> Be careful. Um, a number lambda is said to be an eigenvalue of A if there exists a non-zero, and this is important, I'll bold it in a minute or underline it, a non-zero solution vector, capital K, of the linear system. So remember in the last section, let me give you an example here. In the last section, we did a problem and we got this, right? You could have written that as 1, 1, 3. This is what they mean by a solution vector, okay? The top is x1, the middle is x2, the bottom is x3, okay? So that is a solution vector. So what they're just telling you is that K is that little long vector, okay? And not only that, but it has this really weird relationship with lambda. It means if I took my entire matrix A and I multiplied it by that solution, it would be the exact same thing as if I had taken this magic number lambda <laughs> and multiplied it by the solution, okay? Now, of course, a whole matrix does not equal one value, right? So we're not saying that A equals lambda, the whole matrix e equals one number, that's impossible, okay? What they're saying is that they have the same relationship with this, eigenve this eigenvector or this solution, okay? That's what they're saying. That when I multiply these two things together and I multiply this two things together, it's going to come out the same, okay? Now, I know I skipped over the multiplication, um, the multiplication section, 
because if I did that section, we would have to do two by twos and three by threes and four by fives and five by sixes and all kinds of weird stuff, okay? I don't really wanna focus on that. We just need to do the two by twos because that's all they have us do in this section, okay? I can show you how to multiply two by two vectors together real quick, okay? So let me give you, um, finish this definition. It says the solution vector K is said to be an eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue. What that means is that each solution, each eigenvector could have its very own eigenvalue, okay? Each one has its own lambda. So here's a vector, I'm sorry, a matrix. And here's one solution. And here is another solution. And here is a third solution. I don't know what the constants are to the matrix, right? But apparently all three of these things are solutions to that whatever it was, okay? What they're asking me to do is verify if the eigen, no, if the solution vectors are eigenvectors. And the only way they will be eigen is if there's a lambda that has that relationship, okay? They're not asking me to find that lambda, although you kind of do have to do it. Um, you just don't have to do it from scratch, okay? So what I'm gonna do is what we wanna find out. We wanna find out if, um, I'm going to split this up into three parts. So I'm going to do it for each one individually. Can't do them all at the same time. I want to know if this equals this for some, some lambda. That's the question. Does this equal this? I don't know. Let's plug it in. 6, 2, 3, 1 is what A is, and 3, 2 is K1. Lambda, we don't know what that is, so we're just going to keep it like lambda. But all I did was plug in A and plug in K1. Okay? Now I'm going to actually multiply these two matrices together. And I don't know if you remember how to do this, but the whole top row gets multiplied by the whole column, item by item and then you add them together. So what I have to do is I have to visually take this 6, 3 and transpose it like this. So the 6, 3 will get multiplied by the 3, 2. So the 6, look at my first finger and my middle finger, right? First finger is the 6, middle finger is the 3. When I transpose it, my first finger is next to this 3 and my middle finger is next to the 2, right? which means that that six is gonna get multiplied by the three. And that three is gonna get multiplied by the two. So I'm gonna write it out. Six times three plus three times two. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for the bottom row. So two and one get multiplied by three and two. So two gets multiplied by the three and the one gets multiplied by the two. You have to visually see that transpose over, okay? So the six and the three go here, the two and the one go there. Got it? Now it's weird, but <laughs> that's what's happening. Here, lambda just multiplies by both. So you get three lambda, and then you get two lambda. That one's easy when it's just a one thing multiplied. That one thing gets multiplied by everybody. But what number do I get? I get 18 plus 6, which is what? 
24, is that right? 24. And then I get 6 plus 2, that's 8. Okay. Is there a lambda? One single lambda. This is the same number, right? Is there one single value that will work for both the top and the bottom? What would lambda have to be to get 24? 8. And if I put that 8 here, will I get 8? No. I'll get 16, won't I? So this does not work. No such lambda exists. Which means K1 is not an eigenvector. It may be a solution, but it's definitely not this special kind of solution, this eigenvector solution. Okay? Now we're going to try number two. See what number two looks like. So this is going to be part B. So now I want to know if this relationship holds for K2. Well, let's see. A is still this, but K2 is 1 and 0. And so we're going to do the same thing again. Multiply A times K and then multiply lambda times K. This one's easy. You just get lambda and 0, right? The what lambda is when I multiply it by 0, I'm going to get 0. But the left-hand side. The 6 will get multiplied by the 1, and the 3 will get multiplied by the 0. The 2 will get multiplied by the 1, and this one will get multiplied by the 0. So I end up with 6 and 2. Now, you don't even need to try to figure out the lambda, right? Is 0 ever going to be 2? No. And this is the reason this is bad, right? Zero cannot be the same as two. So that means that K2 is not an eigenvector. We keep getting no, 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 right? Let's see what happens when it is. Let's see one that works. So now we're checking to see if this will hold. And it probably will, but, but how, right? Why? So let's take 6, 2, 3, 1 times K3, which was negative 5 and 10, and then lambda times K3. Right-hand side's always easier. The left-hand side, we have to do some computation. So 6 times negative 5 plus 3 times 10. 2 times negative 5 plus 1 times 10. So I end up with 0 and 0. So looking at the top, well, you can't see anything that I'm writing. Let me let you write that down, because I was saying it, but you couldn't see it. So there's A, there's K3, my lambda, K3, 6 times negative 5, 3 times 10, 2 times negative 5, 1 times 10. That's negative 30 and positive 30, so I got 0. This is negative 10 and positive 10, so we get another 0. What would lambda have to be so that when I multiply it by negative 5, I would get 0? This would mean lambda would have to equal what? Zero. Yeah. So then check the bottom. If I put zero in here, will I get this? Mm -hmm. And because it's the same value for both, that means K3 is an eigenvector. So the first few problems that you have to do in the homework is literally just this. 
you're just multiplying these two together, multiplying the lambda, and seeing if you get the same lambda for the top row and the bottom row. If you can't find a lambda at all because of this situation, right, it's no. If you find one lambda for the top and a totally different lambda for the bottom, it's a no. Only if you get the same value for lambda on both rows will it be a yes, okay? So that's the kind of problems that I was saying you were gonna have to check. And that's all you're doing is just checking them. However, things can get complicated. So, so I want to do another example. And the way it's gonna get complicated is what if my solutions are imaginary solutions, right? So it's the same thing essentially. I just want you to see what it looks like when I throw, when I throw eyes in there, okay? So I want to do a whole nother example, but with the imaginary stuff, okay? So it's nothing game plan is going to change. It's just, it's going to look different because um, there's eyes. So this time my A is going to be 2, negative 1, 8, negative 2. My K1 is going to be 0, 0. K2 is going to be, oh god, here's where it gets weird, 2 plus 2i and negative 1. K3 is going to be 2 plus 2i and positive 1. Sorry, I had to squish that one in there. I don't even need to do anything for party. All I have to do is pay special attention to my definition. And I said I was going to underline it, and then I never did it. <laughs> so back to my definition. It says, dun, 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 a number lambda is said to be an eigenvalue of A if there exists a non-zero solution K. Okay, then this K would be an eigenvalue vector right but in order for that to even be considered it has to be non-zero which means all the people in it cannot be zero it's okay if one or two or most of them are zero but they can't all be zero okay so for the first one I already know that k1 cannot be an eigenvector by definition, it has to be non-zero in order for it to be an eigenvector. This is going to come into play a lot. We're probably not going to get to it today, but when we get to it on Tuesday, that's going to be important. The fact that all the entries in K cannot be zero. Okay? B... These are not zero, so let's go see if this relationship is going to let me have a lambda. Two plus two i and negative one. Two plus two i and negative one. So we're going to multiply. This is going to be weird. This is one thing, okay? So when I multiply these, the two is gonna get multiplied by the two plus two i, and the eight is gonna get multiplied by the one. The negative one is gonna get multiplied by the two plus two i, and the negative two is gonna get multiplied by the negative one. Over here, I have to multiply lambda by both of these. That's going to turn this into 2 lambda plus 2 lambda i, or 2 i lambda. It doesn't matter what order you write it in. And then negative lambda. So see how I told you it looks weirder when you have the imaginary stuff in there? So let's see what we're going to get. That's going to be 4. I'm just going to rewrite it. 4 plus 4i minus 8. This is going to be negative 2, negative 2i 
plus two. And these guys, I'm gonna keep them exactly the same. And then I'm gonna combine my like terms. So I get negative four plus four i, and I get zero minus two i. Now in the previous examples, I had always looked at the top row first to figure out what lambda could be, right? And then I checked it in the bottom. However, in this instance, because of what I have here, it's actually easier to try to identify lambda with the bottom, right? Because what would lambda have to be for the bottom to be true? Right, you already got the negative matching, right? But in order for this to match this, that would mean lambda would have to be 2i. So it's easy to identify it with the bottom. And if you do that, just make sure you check it in the top. Okay? So if I multiplied this times 2i, what would I get? If I multiplied this 2 times 2i, I would get 4i, wouldn't I? What if I were to multiply 2i times 2i? I would get 4i squared, which is 4 times negative 1, which is negative 4. So that whole top entry will become 4i minus 4. Is that what I have in the top entry on the left-hand side? It is, just in a different order, right? The real number is the exact same number with the exact same sign, and the imaginary has the exact same coefficient with the exact same sign, doesn't it? So that lambda does hold the same for both the bottom and the top. And if that same lambda works for both, what do we say about k? k2 is or is not an eigenvector. It is an eigenvector. So we just had to make sure that if I multiplied whatever that lambda was, if I multiplied here and here, I need to get the top. So this side has to equal that side, and it does. It just looks weird because there's a bunch of eyes here going on. Let's check number three. So first, do we have this relationship? We don't know. Let's go find out. Oh, it should be a positive one now. So that means my computation part's gonna be just a little bit different. And that's just going to be lambda, not negative lambda. So let's see. 2 times 2 plus 2i plus 8 times 1. Negative 1 times 2 plus 2i plus negative 2 times the 1. We get 4 plus 4i plus 8. And here we get negative 2 minus 2i minus 2. So then if I combine my like terms, I get 12 plus 4i and negative 4 minus 2i. Which one's easier to identify a possible eigenvalue? A possible lambda? Is the top row gonna help me find the lambda faster or the bottom row? The bottom, because lambda is exactly what's there, right? <laughs> that has to be, these have to be the same in order for them to be equivalent. So lambda has to be this. 
but I don't know if it works for the top as well. So we have to check to see if it works for the top as well. So we're going to plug it in and we're going to hope that after we multiply everything that we get 12 plus 4i. If we do not get 12 plus 4i, then this is not an eigenvector. If we do get 12 plus 4i after all the multiplication, then it is an eigenvector. So let's go see. 2 times negative 4 minus 2i plus 2i times negative 4 minus 2i. Plugging it into here, and I want to see if I get that. I'm going to get negative 8 minus 4i, negative 8i minus 4i squared. So then I get negative 8 minus 12i minus 4 times negative 1. That'll be plus 4. So I get negative 4 minus 12i. Is that the same as what's on the left hand side? It's got 4's and 12's in it, right? But it's not the same. <laughs> I'm supposed to get 12 for my real part. And over here, I have negative 4 for my real part. And then the imaginary part was supposed to be 4, but I've got a negative 12. So this is not the same as what was there. Which means that K3 is not an eigenvalue or eigenvector. You have to be careful. And I always keep saying value all the time. But eigenvalues are the lambdas. The eigenvectors are the Ks. Okay? So be careful. Now we do have homework. If you wanted to get started, I mean you could, but you'd have to know what was going on <laughs> in the rest of the section. But this is the homework, all of the homework for 8.8. .8. However, the only thing that you'd be able to do if you just took what I just go, went over, this whole checking to see if the vectors work or not, it's just 1, 2, and 5. Okay? So we'll get into the other problems next class. Okay? And so if you do all of 8.2 this weekend and all of 8.4 this weekend and the first three problems of 8.8, .8, you're setting yourself up for having a whole week just to do four problems, right? Okay? Or you can just wait until after Tuesday and then now you have a whole week to do the whole thing, right? But that's up to you, how you want to use your time. But we will see each other on Tuesday and then on Thursday you need to work on this, okay? Instead of coming to class, work on that. Work on all of the homework assignments. And then when we come back,